Alright, gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is basically glycolysis backwards for the most part. Um, it happens in your liver cells during fasting and starvation. Your, your liver's a good guy, he'll take care of the rest of your body. So it's going to take some non glucose things and turn them into glucose. Um, so, what we have here is glycolysis. So, if you don't remember all those enzymes, you might want to watch the Unit 3 video um, for that again, as well as the regulation, because the regulation is pretty similar. Um, and you're going to need to know part of it for, for this unit. So we have a couple precursors here that we're going to talk about individually, um, whether it's coming from your fat, your triglycerides into glycerol, that jumps in in the early half of glycolysis and goes through, lactate proteins, uh, amino acids, uh, can join oxaloacetate or pyruvate, and then you're basically, instead of coming this way through glycolysis, you're going up. The glucose is the main key, and the liver is going to release the glucose. Remember, uh, red blood cells can only run on glucose, and the brain needs glucose as well. We'll come back to this a couple times. The main precursors are pyruvate, oxaloacetate, and glycerol. Uh, lactate and a family of amino acids will both go to pyruvate before entering in, and oxaloacetate uh, has a family of amino acids as well that will go to oxaloacetate and then up towards glucose. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the new enzymes. If you remember in glycolysis, there were um, key steps, key regulatory steps, and that was mainly one th reactions 1, 3, and 7. And because they're regulatory, they can only go one way. So this is reaction 1 of glycolysis, this is reaction 3, and this is reaction 10. Because they can only go one way, all the other enzymes can work both ways. So you don't need new enzymes for those. You just need a, another enzyme for all of the, the regulatory steps as a way of getting around it, another pathway to take. So let's start down towards the bottom. To get to pyruvate, to PEP, first you turn into ox oxaloacetate by pyruvate carboxylase and then oxaloacetate to PEP by PEP carboxykinase. And this is pyruvate kinase, was so the enzyme from glycolysis that can just do it in one step. In glycolysis, you can go from F6 phosphate to F16 biphosphate by PFK1. If you remember your glycolysis steps. And to get around PFK1 to go backwards through gluconeogenesis, you take F16 bisphosphatase or FBase1. There's a hexokinase here to go from glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. On the way backwards, it's glucose 6 phosphatase. That was our ER bound. We'll talk about all this ATP stuff in a minute. Here's the main stuff to know about these enzymes. Uh, glucose 6-phosphatase was the ER bound one and that's not found in muscle. Fructose 1-6-bisphosphatase is located in the cytosol. That's all we'll say about it for now. It mainly comes into play with regulation. PEP carboxykinase is found in both the cytosol and the mitochondria, and it uses GTP.
and then pyruvate carboxylase it's found in the mitochondria only it's a ligase so it uses ATP it's biotin dependent he made a point to say biotin is bound to uh, the lysine in it but I'm not sure if that's too important maybe for a quiz to know lysine is the amino acid it's involved HCO3 minus is uh, used in the biotin reaction, or the pyruvate carboxylase reaction, and water is used as well. So, because if this is mitochondria only, so you're going to be generating this acetate in the mitochondria. To get it out, you're going to use something we learned about in uh, Unit 5, which was the MAS shuttle. You can review that um, in Unit 5 video if you want. The main things to know about it is that malate dehydrogenase is the enzyme. Remember, all dehydrogenases are niacin or B3 dependent. So it takes the acetate from the mitochondria to the cytosol, and it is found. the enzyme is found in both as well. So keep track of where all these enzymes are. That's a popular question. I had to say the things to focus on this unit. The, uh, I was looking through the old test, and pretty much all of the questions are about the the vitamins and the regulation. And there's a little bit about the location of the enzymes. So when you're studying, I would say. These are your top two priorities, but know, know this as well. Literally, I think 90% of the questions were about these two for the, the gluconeogenesis section. So, back to here again. We just learned about these, these enzymes. Now we're going to learn about what takes uh, or what gets it to pyruvate. Pyruvate can be the initial precursor or it can come from lactate or the pyruvate family of amino acids. So it's coming from lactate, something we learned about briefly in glycolysis is uh, lactate can go to pyruvate through lactate dehydrogenase. Remember dehydrogenase B3. This is a cytosol only enzyme all your red blood cells will generate lactate. Your muscles will generate some lactate under high stress conditions. And so that lactate from the red blood cells or the muscle will be taken to the liver and then processed by lactate dehydrogenase. So that's all, all you have to know about that one. A little side note on glycerol. So basically you had a triacylglyceride. So you had the you got the glycerol and fatty acids from it. Three fatty acids bound to one glycerol. If you remember that from Biochem 1. Fatty acids we'll talk about in unit 10, so not gonna worry about those now. The glycerol first reacts with ATP, with glycerol kinase, makes glycerol phosphate, which then acts with another dehydrogenase, glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase, nice and dependent, and then you're at DHAP from glycolysis. We're going to start keeping track of all the ATPs spent here. Remember, glycerol only has three carbons and glucose has six, so it's going to take two of these glycerols uh, in order to form one glucose molecule. So to get one glucose, this glycerol kinase is going to end up doing this reaction twice with two different glycerol molecules and that will eventually make one glucose. So two ATP spent to get from glycerol to glucose. Next we're going to talk about the proteins and the, the amino acids and how they're turned into glucose. So 
you're going to see this a couple times, I would just know this really well, it comes back in another unit. Basically what's happening here is you have an amino acid and alpha ketoglutarate react. And they react by amino transferase. Know that is a B6 dependent enzyme. B6 is pyroxene, PLP is the coenzyme form. So we'll associate all of this with amino transferase. And you're going to get an alpha keto acid, which is going to be pyruvate or oxaloacetate, as far as we're concerned now. Glutamate is the product, and then you go through a little recycling step. Glutamate reacts with a NADH plus, plus water to get you the alpha ketoglutarate again and you generate NADH and NH4 plus which is going to go to the urea cycle just one of the last units. The alpha ketoglutarate you should recognize from unit 5 the Krebs cycle it is the same same metabolite. For the second reaction the enzyme is glutamate dehydrogenase dehydrogenase niacin and it's an oxidative deanimation. Both of these enzymes can be found in the cytosol or the mitochondria. So this amino acid, if we want to show some examples of it, the pyruvate family amino acid is going to come in and react with alpha ketoglutarate and you're going to get pyruvate and glutamate and the rest is the same. So the same thing with an oxaloacetate family amino acid you're going to get acceloacetate, everything else is the same. So this is more of the generic form. These are a little bit more specific. I want you to know a couple of the families, you're eventually going to have to know them all for one of the last units. But the pyruvate family oxaloacetate family and I had a note alpha ketoglutarate family to know that one for this unit um, I'll go over it again when we get to the amino acid unit at the end the mnemonics I used for this for pyruvate was on a pirate ship all the guys tripped acid three times sir For oxaloacetate, uh, oxaloacetate needs an assassin as soon as possible. For alpha ketoglutarate, Glenn glued his army prostitute. If these help you, great. If not, come up with your own. Post them on the group. These are things I still remember though. Um, that table in there are all glucogenic amino acids, like all of these are all glucogenic, and the two that aren't on the table are the ketogenic one. Uh, so no, leucine and lysine cannot go to glucose. That, that does not happen, and that was a t test question last try. This unit's pretty easy. All right. Let's review a little bit. You should be able to name off all six of the uh, different metabolites or different glucose precursors and be able to tell the pathway they get there, which enzymes are used, and how much energy is used to get there. So this is a little, little summary. Make sure you can draw this out. The important thing to know is the amino acids both are B6 dependent that amino transferase enzyme here the pyruvate so if if you were given a pyruvate family amino acid you would have to know it's B6 dependent and then it goes up to oxaloacetate via biotin spending 2 ATP and it goes from, to PEP via PEP carboxykinase and that's 2GTP which is equivalent to 2ATP as far as the body's concerned. 
there's two ATPs spent in this uh, from glucose. So let me talk about that for a minute. If you remember, I think it was step seven of glycolysis, the enzyme is PG kinase. And in glycolysis, you went 1,3-BPG plus ADP into 3PG plus ATP. So you were generating two ATPs, remember, because this was all happening twice. Even though it's a kinase, it's an exception, so it can go both ways. So when you're going up through gluconeogenesis, you are spending two ATPs to go from 3PG to 1,3-BPG. So that's where these two extra ATPs are coming from. It's step 7 of glycolysis reversed. PG kinase is the enzyme. So this step here, that accounts for these two ATPs. So back to this, the pyruvate family amino acid spent 1, 2, 3, 4 ATPs plus 2 GTPs or 6 ATP equivalents, however you want to say it. If it's coming in from the oxaloacetate, it's going to skip these ATPs. So it's only going to have two GTPs plus two ATPs. Glycerol skips all of this. Glycerol spends only two ATPs before it gets to glucose. So that's the most efficient, efficient one, or costs the least amount of energy to get to glucose. So lactate, pyruvate, the pyruvate family, family of amino acids, they all cost six, because they're all leading up to this pyruvate, two, four, six. This costs four, and this costs two. Make sure to know all of the vitamins really well, especially the biotin and B6 for where they come in. So this summarizes all of the regulation that you need. I didn't write the enzymes in here. Um, so let's take it one at a time. So the first, if we were talking about it in glycolysis terms, this would be 1, 3, and 10 for the, the reactions. So the only thing that you have to worry about for the very first reaction is that glucose 6-phosphatase, the enzyme that takes you from here to here, is has its genes repressed by insulin. The only other thing to know about gene repression or induction is on PEP carboxykinase, this enzyme here. It's also repressed by insulin, but it's induced by glucagon. That was a question on a test. Step three should be very familiar because you learned this part in the glycolysis unit. This part's new. So to get from here to here, it was PFK1, but to get back, it's FBase1, our new enzyme from this unit. Citrate stimulates that, and F26BP inhibits that. That's the key inhibitor on both sides. That's the, that's the main one. You also have some energy charge going on, AMP, ADP, ADP, all these low energy things inhibit, and high energy things inhibit glycolysis. So when you're drawing this out, always know that glycolysis going down here, gluconeogenesis is going the opposite way. Overall, glycolysis is happening because of PP1, insulin, gluconeogenesis happening because of PKA. It's kind of the, the big picture part. And then just to know all, all of these little things, because he will ask the details specific to these enzymes, so make sure you, you have this down really, really well. It could save you up to five questions on the test, I would guess. Don't forget, pyruvate kinase has that feed-forward stimulation here. Uh, Acetyl-CoA will help stimulate this. Pyruvate carboxylase. 
if you want some review on this um, step here, you can look at the regulation by Glycolysis Part 2 video. But basically, what it's going to say is you have PFK2 is what makes F26 biphosphate. That's your key activator, your potent activator. A little bit of that will make glycolysis happen very rapidly. And all that happens because of insulin or PP1. So PP1 comes, on, comes in here, turns on PFK2, turns off FBase2, and then this is created. Glycolysis happens. PKA will turn this off, PFK2, turn on FBase2, which takes the F26 biphosphate and turns it off. Or makes it go away, metabolizes it, then gluconeogenesis can take place. So I think that's it. Know this really well. Regulation, vitamins, uh, is the first thing to learn on all, all of this unit.